In this example, we're going to work with the signal x of t, which is a polynomial t cubed u of t. So this is a polynomial that basically kind of turns on at time zero. And the other signal we're going to work with is y of t equals t squared u of t. So it's also this polynomial that kind of turns on at time zero. And we're going to compute the convolution of these two quantities. We're going to compute this new signal z of t, we'll call it. And it's just equal to the convolution of x of t with y of t. And again, this is the convolution symbol that we use all the time. And we know what this convolution symbol means. Really what that means is perform an integration, and that integration is x of tau times y of t minus tau d tau. So this right here is just the definition of the convolution integral, and this is what we want to evaluate for these specific x of t and y of t in this problem where we're dealing with polynomials. The key to doing convolution is being able to sketch pictures of this integrand. So when I work a convolution problem, I always start off by sketching these individual pieces. So the first thing I ask myself is, what does x of tau look like? Well, x of tau is just x of t with all the t's replaced by tau's. That's what it means to write down x of tau, replace all the t's with tau's. So that's what I've done here. I've looked at my original definition of x of t, and I've written, down, written it down, but with all the t's replaced by tau's. And I can also make a sketch of this. This is a sketch that I'll make versus tau, because this is now a function of tau. And it looks like this polynomial, t cubed, so it's this you know, polynomial growing thing as tau gets large. But at time zero, it's zero, because the unit step function is zero for all time less than or equal to tau zero. Tau less than zero. So this is what x of tau looks like. This is the trickier part, and this is where people usually mess up. I need to be able to sketch what y of t minus tau looks like. So usually when I sketch this, I kind of break it down into pieces. First of all, let's actually write out the math for what this is. What is y of t minus tau? Well, again, that means look at the original expression for y of t and replace all of the t's with t minus tau. So that's what I've done here. Here is I replace t with t minus tau. And here I replace t with t minus tau. So mathematically, this is what y of t minus tau is, but it's really nice to be able to plot a picture of this. So I kind of do this in a sequence of steps. Tau is the time variable that I'm integrating across here, so I start by sketching y of tau. So what does just y of tau look like? Well, that's easy. It almost looks like x of tau, except instead of going up at a rate of tau cubed, it goes up at a rate of tau squared. And it's zero everywhere here because the unit step function has turned everything off. So this is what y of tau looks like, but that's not really what I need. I really need to know what y of t minus tau looks like, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there. So the next thing I like to do is to sketch what does y of minus tau looks like. So now I've done the time reversal, and that's easy to do. Now that I have this plotted to plot y of minus tau, this is the time reverse version, I just flip everything to the negative time. So I've mirrored this about the time origin of tau zero. So this is what y of minus tau looks like. And now I'm really close to being able to sketch what I really want, this signal. And I do that by still plotting versus tau, this signal I'm about to plot, which is a time-shifted version of the time-reversed signal. So this is the time-reversed signal right here, and I'm about to plot a time-shifted version of it. The amount of shift is t. So what I like to do is I like to plot versus tau, and I know what the shape is going to look like. It's still going to look like this polynomial going to the left. The only difference between this figure and this figure is that it's been shifted by an amount t. So where this stops right here is no longer zero, it's t. And that really is the key step in doing a convolution integral, being able to get to this picture. Once you've gotten to this picture, now you can plug in up here and do your math just like you normally would do your, do your calculus. So now that we have each of these plotted, we have x of tau plotted, and we have y of t minus tau plotted, we can plug into this integral and actually do the math. And we break it down into the cases as usual, because depending on the value of t, where exactly y of t minus tau is on the tau axis changes the answer. So let's go ahead and break that down into cases. What happens when t is less than or equal to zero? So going with my plots, I can plot x of tau, and it looks like this, and y of t minus tau, when t is less than or equal to zero, looks like this. If tau is less than or equal to zero, on the time axis here, it's below zero. Here's zero right here, and there's t. It has to be below it. 
So here's kind of a little cartoon I sketch, and I can tell that these signals, they don't overlap at all. x of tau times y of t minus tau is equal to zero, because x of tau is zero all down here, and similarly, y of t minus tau is zero all up here. So when I multiply them together, that product is actually zero, which means if I integrate that product, I'm integrating zero over all time, well, that's a really easy integral to do, it's just zero. So that wasn't too bad. So we now know that z of t is equal to zero for all time less than or equal to zero. Let's do the other case. What about when time is greater than zero? So again, I sketch my little cartoon plot here as a function of tau. Here is x of tau. And here now is y of t minus tau. So now tau, or t, is greater than the time origin zero. That's the case I'm sketching right here. And I can go ahead and write down my convolution integral. And based on this picture now, I can go ahead and simplify the math. So we can actually just plug everything in. The question becomes, how do I simplify this integral? And I simplify it by looking at my picture. By looking at my picture, I can see that I don't have any overlap here. And I also don't have any overlap once I get here. It's only the integral from 0 to t where they are non-zero at the same time. So this entire integral right here, basically instead of an integral from minus infinity to infinity, turns into an integral from zero to t of t cubed t minus tau squared, I'm sorry, tau cubed t minus tau squared d tau. We've essentially let the limits of the integral simplify to kind of account for the unit steps, and we were able to do that easily by looking at this picture. And so from here on now, it's this pretty simple calculus. We can just multiply things out. I've got tau cubed times t minus tau squared. So if I just start multiplying that out, I get a t squared minus 2t tau plus a tau squared. And this is an integral with respect to d tau right there. If I keep multiplying things out, that turns into tau cubed t squared minus 2 tau to the fourth t plus t to the fifth. And this is an integral, again, with respect to tau. So really I'm just doing, you know, simple polynomial integration at this point. So t or tau cubed turns into tau to the fourth over four. The second term turns into tau to the fifth over five. And the last term turns into tau to the sixth over six. And I have to evaluate all of this at t and zero. So when I plug in t, I get t to the sixth, this right here. When I let tau equal t, I get t to the fourth times t squared, which is t to the sixth. Similarly, when I let tau equal t here, I get t to the fifth times t is another t to the sixth. And then plugging in here, when tau equals t, I get t to the sixth over six. Then I have to subtract off this evaluated at zero. Well, that's just zero. So that's all I have. I can start getting a common denominator. The common denominator, the easiest way to go is just 4 times 5 times 6, which is 120. So I can get a common denominator on all these terms. It turns into this. And then I have 30t to the 6 minus 48t to the 6 plus 20t to the 6, which simplifies to 2t to the 6 over 120 or 1 to the 60 or 1 over 60t to the 6. So this is the final answer I get for the special case of t greater than zero. So now we can use case one and case two and basically lump them together. Let's use the unit step. I could either write a piecewise equation here or I could use my unit step function. I'm going to use the unit step function. The convolution of x and y, which is what we're defining as z, is equal to 1 60th t to the sixth u of t. And we have completed the convolution integral that we set out to do. Again, the key step is being able to make pictures like this so when it's time to plug into the integral, you know how to simplify these limits appropriately.